All right, so for section 414, we're going to be writing functions given their roots, their answers, the, the zeros, the solutions, right? So um, they're going to give you the answers, and they're going to say, write us the function that it came from. Now, if you see something like this, so if you see, uh, and maybe like the problem says um, 2 multiplicity 3. If that's all you see, okay, if that's the way they start you off, then what that means is that your answers, uh, then your answers are 2, 2, and 2. Does that make sense, right? 2, 3 times, right? Multiplicity of 3 means it happens 3 times. That means that when you guys have to do this problem, you're going to write it out like this. f of x equal to x minus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2. All right, and then you're going to just multiply everything out, okay? It's going to take some time, but you're going to multiply everything out. Now, I'm not going to do this one. I'm just letting you, letting you know that from here, I'm going to say and distribute to finish now if you're wondering why did i write minus two not plus two remember the hint from that section that i put in green that said whatever the solutions are you have to write the opposite of them right so uh if there's two uh, there's three positive twos and inside the factors you write three negative twos okay and then you just distribute and you're done now, like I said, I don't want to do this because I'd rather do problems from your homework. So I'm going to do two problems from your homework, which is going to give you only six to do. Okay? So here we go. So one of the problems is going to look like this. Okay? So this is actually number two. So I'll actually put it right here. Just number two. So you guys know which one to look at. They're going to want you to um, write the function that's represented by these solutions. Okay? So write the function with the following roots. Remember, roots mean zero, solutions, etc. cetera. Uh, and this is what they gave us, a negative three, a positive one, and a negative two. Okay, so they're giving us the three solutions of negative three, positive one, and a negative two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off writing my function. So I'm going to put f of x is equal to. So for the negative three, what should I write? x what? Anybody know? A minus three or a plus three? Plus three, right? It's always the opposite. What about the next one? x it's a positive one, so I put negative one. And then the last one is x plus two, okay? And that's like the hard part, but not really. Really, the hard part is the distribution portion, right? So just be careful, but let's do this kind of slowly. We're going to distribute right here first, so let's see. This is x times x is x squared, and x times negative one is negative x. Now let's distribute these numbers here. So 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Now notice, I'm going to put in a parenthesis because I still haven't messed with x plus 2 yet. But let's go ahead and simplify that uh, four-term thing. I know the middle can be combined. Negative x plus 3x is a positive 2x. So this will be x squared plus 2x minus 3. And then I have an x plus 2 on the outside. Well, I'm not done yet. I have to keep distributing, okay? I'm going to keep distributing. So let's do it again. x times x squared, x times 2x, and x times negative 3. Okay, I'm going to do those three right there. Bless you. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times 2x is a positive 2x squared. And x times negative 3 is a negative 3x. Now let's distribute the last number here. 
So that two is gonna multiply the three terms as well. So two times x squared is a positive two x squared. Two times two x is a positive four x. And two times negative three is a negative six. And now it's your job to combine all the like terms. Here are your like terms, okay? These are like terms because they have a squared, right? x squared. And uh, the negative 3x and the positive 4x, these are like terms as well. The other two are just going to be written out. So here we go. x cubed. Now, 2x squared plus 2x squared is 4x squared. Negative 3x plus 4x is a positive 1x, or just plus x. And then a minus 6. And this is the answer that they're looking for. Okay, that's your solution. Now, can you guys agree with me that this is not supposed to be difficult? Like, you're literally just writing factors and multiplying. Like, it's not supposed to be difficult. But can you also agree with me that it would, it would probably be kind of easy to make a small mistake as you're transferring things back and forth? Yeah, right? So just be careful. Don't rush through the homework, okay? Take your time. Draw the lines like I do. I, I've been doing this for over 20 years plus the, the 12 years in school and all that other stuff. Um, I still draw lines when I do the multiplication sometimes because I don't want to mess up because I know if I mess up, then I got to do everything all over again, right? So it's better to take a little bit of extra time. Make sure you're doing it right. Okay, but there you go. Here's one of the answers for your um, for your homework. No, whenever you add, the powers don't change. So his question was, when I added 2x squared with 2x squared, why didn't I maybe possibly write 4x to the fourth, right? Like, why didn't I add the powers? You don't add powers when you add the terms together. The only time the powers change is when you multiply or divide them. Okay, when you multiply powers, they add. When you divide them, they subtract. Okay, but when you're just adding the terms, they don't, they don't change. Okay, so good question. There. Yeah. Um, okay, now let me show you one of the new type of problems that you're going to see. But before I do that, I just got to give you a little bit of info here. All right, so here's a, a note. So complex numbers... always come in pairs okay so in other words if I were to tell you 2i is a solution then you should say oh well then negative 2i is also a solution okay if I were to tell you that negative i is a solution then you should say well then positive i is also a solution okay they always come in a plus or minus group okay so if i give you negative 3i then you automatically have to also include positive 3i okay you we have to do both and they never really put both of them there for you so they're trying to see like do you remember this so this is going to be uh the one i'm going to do right now for us uh, is going to be number eight, okay? Actually, let's do number seven. That one's a little tougher. So number seven, the same instructions as above, okay? So write a polynomial or write a function <coughs> with the following roots. And the roots are 3i and 2i. So this one's going to take us a while because, uh, unfortunately, um, how many solutions did they actually give us? I mean, you see two, right? But doesn't each one of those have a counterpart as well, right? The other. So there's really, if I write this out, a negative 3i and a negative 2i as well. So there's, how many factors am I going to have then? How many of those little parentheses am I going to have to write? Four of them, 
That's a lot of work, right? So, you know, again, it's not that it's supposed to be crazy difficult, but it, it can get complicated. So here we go. F of X. By the way, when you write your factors, keep the, the related imaginary numbers or the complex numbers together. So the 3i and the minus 3i, I'm going to put them together. Okay, so like this. The plus 3i, I'm going to write x minus 3i. And then the minus 3i, I'm going to put it next to it. Okay, so that's a plus 3i. for the. So I did this one and this one first. Trust me, keep them together. The counterparts, put them together because when you multiply them, things happen where things start to cancel out and it becomes a nice thing to, to see. So you want to keep them together. Now, the 2i and the minus 2i, let's see, x, the uh, positive 2i becomes minus 2i, and then x minus 2i would be plus 2i. Now here's the trick. When you do these complex numbers, always multiply the groups that, that have the same looking answer, right? Just I know one's plus, one's minus. Always do those first. So I'm gonna do these, the ones that I have them in color, I'm gonna do those first together, okay? I'm gonna do the yellows, and then I'm gonna do the blues, but I'm not gonna intermix, not yet, okay? Let's do the, the first two together and the last two together. And trust me, that's the easiest way to do these problems. So here we go. X times X, X times 3i. Okay, that's what I'm going to do first. So X times X, that's X squared plus 3xi. That's X times 3i, that's 3xi. Okay, now let's do the negative 3i times X and negative 3i times 3i. So negative 3i times X is negative 3xi. And negative 3i times a positive 3i, that's a negative 9i squared. Just out of curiosity, you guys remember what i squared equals? Negative 1. So that's kind of nice. And what's going to happen to those two middle terms? They're going to cancel out. This is why I want you guys to keep those things together because that's going to happen all the time. If it doesn't happen, you multiplied wrong. These are gone. So, let me just rewrite, and then we're going to do the blue ones right now. Uh, this is going to be minus 9 times negative 1. I'm taking an, an extra step, okay? If you just want to write x squared plus 9, feel free, okay? Now, let me do the blue side now, okay? I'm going to go back up one level, uh, and I'm going to do the blue side. So, here we go. x times x, x times 2i. So, x times x is x squared x times 2i is 2xi. Now let's do the other. Negative 2i times x and negative 2i times 2i. So um, negative 2i times x is negative 2xi. And negative 2i times a positive 2i is a negative 4i squared. Notice the terms in the middle for that one. Do those cancel as well? The, the 2xi minus 2xi? Yeah. That's supposed to happen. If it doesn't happen, check your work. It's supposed to go away. So if I rewrite my next factor, it's x squared minus 4 times negative 1, right? Because i squared, I'm going to put that right here, as i squared equals negative 1. Okay, we're almost done. Let me uh, write this out cleanly here. X squared plus 9. X squared plus 4. So all I have to do now is multiply that and I'm done. Okay, I just got to multiply X squared plus 9 times X squared plus 4. So again, you can see why I say this isn't hard to do, but there's so much work. You want to just be careful. Don't mess up. Okay. So here we go, x squared times x squared, x squared times four, so we get x to the fourth. So right here, Isaiah, the x squared times x squared did add the powers, right? Because I'm multiplying. If I multiply, the powers add up. So two and two is four, so x to the fourth. And then x squared times four is four x squared. 
Now let's do the bottoms here. 9 times x squared and 9 times 4. So 9 times x squared, that's a positive 9x squared. And 9 times 4 is 36. Combine your middle terms and you're done. So x to the 4th plus 13x squared plus 36. And that's your answer. So the main thing you got to be aware of here is you're going to have imaginary numbers. Uh, if you have an imaginary number, make sure you always include the counterpart of it, right? If you have a positive 4i, make sure you include the negative 4i. And then when you put them in their factored form, right, with the parentheses, always keep your imagined numbers, imaginary numbers that kind of match together, like the way I did it, right? Like you can see that they're highlighted. Try to keep them together. That way when you multiply, the middle terms will cancel out. And it makes the work easier. Okay, not a lot easier, but easier than if you mix everything together. All right, so this is your homework. I'm going to give you guys the assignment and just start working on it.